Over the last two and a half years, we have been testing the chef skills of our normal home cooks through a series of cooking challenges. Knife skills, teamwork, improvisation, organisation. But this is the final epic challenge where one of our normals will be crowned sorted sous chef. They'll each be cooking a starter, main course and dessert for a panel of all-star pro chef judges using the skills they've learned to take the win. Don't know what they want from us. I think this is very clever. I'm unsure about this. Now this is what the scores look like after the starters, but today it's main course. Main course, this is it. I'm confident on this one. Yeah? Oh, I yeah? I don't know why. I don't know where <laughs> I sit. I don't know where I sit. But right. let's do it. Good luck, good luck. Good luck. Three, two, one. I don't know what happened. Right, let's talk about my dish. I guess the theme I'm going for here, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Problem is, it's a little bit broke in the first place. I'm making red curry fried chicken. Yes, but stick to what you're semi-good at. <laughs> and hopefully, I'm semi-good at one thing, semi-good at another, bring them together for total good. I've got my flour mix here, which is mostly potato starch with a bit of all-purpose flour, some seasonings, some MSG. Smells wonderful. And I'm simply going to toss my chicken skin on, lesson learned, thank you to all the comments from our fried chicken video, and then quickly fry, take it out, drain, let the oil come back up to temperature, and then double fry to get that super crispy, crunchy coating. For my main course, I'm going decadent. I'm thinking oyster, caviar, champagne, homemade pasta, with a garlic parmesan crisp. What's happened to you? Mate, I'm going to win the Chef Skills Challenge. Wow. What do chefs love? Pompousness. <laughs> Oysters, caviar, champagne. Give them all the expensive stuff and hopefully they won't notice if the pasta's not great. First things first, I need to make my pasta. Now I want a really rich pasta, so I'm going for four egg yolks with 200 grams of flour. I can add in a little bit of dill to my eggs as well, because I want that flavour to come through in the pasta. Once that's formed into a dough, going into a fridge to rest, and I can move on to making my garlic parmesan crisp. What I'm doing here is what I think is the ultimate way to enjoy lamb. I'm searing the fat, then I'm going to turn it, and then I'm going to put it in an oily bag and sous vide it. Never done it before, but when I've had it done like this, it's been amazing. So this fried chicken is going to sit on top of some pan-grilled bok choy, which is going to sit on a lovely puddle of red curry sauce. In here are things like lemongrass, galangal, some Thai lime leaves. I've got those ingredients fresh as well, so if I need them later to elevate things, I've got them. But that is smelling incredible. Get some coconut milk in there. Really good, high quality stuff. This will now deglaze the pan, and obviously you get that coconut creaminess. Gonna go in with some oyster sauce, some depth. I can move on to my pasta sauce. Now I'm gonna do a thinking shallot. Uh, because um, I need to shuck 12 oysters in a minute and I'm really worried about it. So the thinking shallot will help me get prepared. So Salty's been going for over a decade now and the one dish that really, really hit home for me, the best thing I've eaten, was something that James Curry made. Don't tell Kush. A delicious slow-cooked lamb with a parsnip puree, dates, almonds, it was super sweet, super indulgent. So hang on, hang on. What I'm hearing is you're just remaking James Curry's recipe. Incorrect. Good. I'm, I'm going to make it better. Okay. Oh. Barry's entered the chat. Take it as a tribute to James Curry and how far we've all come. To start, parsnip puree, parsnips, peeled, sliced, into milk to boil and soften. Then I'll be blending up and finishing off with some Parmesan. So not only am I doing slow cooked lamb, and then put some diced lamb shoulder into the pan to brown it off and then chuck it into a pressure cooker. And then I reduce some red wine in the pan, chuck that into a pressure cooker, throw some dates into the pressure cooker, throw some rasa hanu and cinnamon into the spice cooker, and that's it. Oh no, garlic! I want my sauce to be like super, super sweet. Hence why I'm throwing in not only dates, but date molasses as well. This stuff, 
is a game changer. I've also taken some extra stock, put that into the pan, reducing it down with some rosemary, which I'm going to add to my sauce later on. Uh, why do I make this? Shut up, stop beeping at me. Stop. Are you okay, stop. Barry? <laughs> stop. Barry, what's Sorry happening? You're right. Barry, talk to me. What's happening? It won't be Remember, Kush isn't allowed to help. It's embarrassing. If you're enjoying this, there are some small things you can do that make a big difference to us. Like the video, subscribe if you aren't, click the notification bell and select all. Thanks. Right, that's reducing. That should be nearly mushy now. Let's get some Thai lime leaves in there. You're going so bold in this challenge. You're going so yes. out of character. I know. But you've got to the top of the leaderboard, albeit joint first, by not doing this. I know. <laughs> I've burnt my bottom. Oh no! Bottom of what? Bottom of my pan, the no. milk caught, and I've got a burny bottom. I think it's okay. I didn't listen to what you're cooking, so I don't know how serious that is, but, you know, blessings. <laughs> <laughs> blessings. Oh, what the hell am I supposed to do with this one? I'm really sorry, chef, I've broken your oyster knife. So I'm quite liberal with that oyster sauce, and this tastes fantastic, but a little bit too salty. So I'm now going to try and balance it by adding a little bit more lime juice, so adding some acidity, and just keep on adjusting it to try and take the edge off of that saltiness. This is really annoying that this is happening now. Why didn't I taste before I did? Right, oysters shucked, and I never want to have to do that again. Um, it's now time to get my sauce going, and I need to get my special ingredient. So I'm now going for a second coating on my blanched chicken. So it's had a fry. Excuse me. Coming through. Oh, what is that? Coming through. Oh, what? Coming through. There was no budget, boys. What? That's pretty yep. much coming are out of my to, rent. Are you looking just to get them absolutely off their face? They can't taste your food. I need one and a half glasses of this. <laughs> it's been an incredible. We're only halfway. Two and a half years. <laughs> <laughs> I really want to do a Formula One style. Yeah. Yes! God, that is boomy, isn't it? Of course, it's got a big bunt. I suppose it would do, though. Cool, your thumb is right in there. Yeah. Boys, whatever happens oh. later today, it's been a pleasure. Just take, take, take a moment, just, just to breathe. Oh. And we're this, happy again. This is headspace. That's a touch. That's good, isn't it? Oh, that is great. I burnt my shallots. <laughs> In that time, I burnt oh, my shallots. No. Is there another shallot over there I can have, please? No! <laughs> I like that out of that came this. <laughs> no! A double benefit. For you Swifty fans out there, this is what you call champagne problems. Zingy. Lovely. Why is that not going darker? While that's all kicking off, let's make my glaze. So it's honey, some lime juice, I'm basically steeping some Thai lime leaves. And it tastes delicious. Time to release the pressure. I think there's not enough spice in there right now. What I'm going to do, pull the lamb part, go back into the sauce, thicken it with some shredded deep fried onions, and then add some more spices. I cheated my new shallots by steaming them for a few minutes, so they're now nice and soft. I'm going to whack the heat up to medium, add in uh, my champagne. Whilst the champagne reduces by about half, I can start to roll my pasta through the, the, the roller. Final step, I've now added some chicken stock to the remainder of my flour, 
made a batter and I'm tossing my chicken through that for a final rice fry. I've never done this before, taking a delicious piece of meat and turning it into a sauce. Dice it up thin with the dates, get it into the sauce, then you've got kind of a lumpy, delicious, lamby, datey sauce. That is so punchy. Uh, who has a spare hand? Yeah, sure. But it should, how many, uh, could you, with the, thank you. Yeah, you've got this. No, because the reason I didn't have it fast was because, there we go. Don't put it over the steam, I don't want it to cook. So the entire theme of my menu is simple, global. So super simple techniques, but with loads of global influences. You know I love fried chicken. And this is a combination of so many different ways of breading chicken. And I think it's going to end in a wonderful result. It's almost like the ultimate multi-technique fried chicken. You're right, there's something wrong with my fish. Oh no, brilliant. <laughs> What's that? It's jelly. I think it's, it's just a really gelatinous fish stock, which is amazing. It's perfect for what I need. Oh yeah, sure, mate. Lemon and lime go, so lemon grass is going into my honey. This is my little hack. Sauce is looking a bit wet, so going in with crispy onions. They've already been floured and fried, therefore, taste delicious and also it'll help thicken the sauce because the flour will come off those and into that. The fish stock and oyster juices have had a couple of minutes in the sauce. I'm now gonna go in with a butt ton of cream and some dill. Let that simmer and thicken for about five, six minutes. In the meantime, I'm gonna boil my pasta, it'll only take one and a half minutes. Uh, and then the last two minutes, I can just add in oysters, pasta, into the sauce, job done. Okay, so this is some corn flour with some water. Just gonna use it to thicken my curry sauce a little. So I'm taking some bok choy and I'm just going to char them in a pan, face down, get a lovely colour on them, and then that's going to be the bed for our fried chicken. Five minutes left, boys. Uh, yeah. OK. Yeah. I think I'm nearly ready to plate. OK. Let's strain my honey. I think we're ready to serve. <laughs> oh, Ebba's good of you to show up, mate. Yeah. So I've got some nice colour on my bok choy, but I do want it to steam through now, so I think I've got a little bit of champagne and a cloche lid. Sorted. Well, that's done. As our chef skills challenge here comes to an end, we're passing the baton onto you with a load of cooking challenges for you to take on in our Sidekick app. Each challenge has been created to help you master an important cooking skill, so you can think and cook like an actual chef. I'd particularly recommend the Flavour Bombs Challenge. Don't worry, they're designed for us normals, so they're completely achievable. Have a go for free by checking out the link below. Right. Main course, you know, this is the one of the biggest parts of a three course meal. This is the bit that everyone is going to almost remember, apart from dessert. Um, what you're looking for, what I'm looking for is, I usually go for protein, so I'm going to judge it on protein as well. So I'm looking for a beautifully cooked piece of protein, which should be the star of it. And then the other ingredients that come around it and literally lift it all up. 
preferably a sauce on there. I want to see some techniques. And I mean, I wouldn't say no to some sort of potato. I don't know, it's cliche, <laughs> but I'm okay with it. Well, I would like uh, I would like to see a plate which is hot to start with. Mm -hmm. uh, main course needs to be hot with a hot plate if it's possible. And also, I like my vegetable. I do like my vegetable. Mm -hmm. I come from the world of, uh, of vegetables. So of course, uh, if there's on meat, as long as it's cooked properly, it's fantastic. But tasty, need to be tasty, well cooked well balanced together, nice, nice texture, whole thing in the works, works together and look beautiful. But look beautiful, as I said, you know, you've got all your life to make it beautiful, only once to make it, it good. Do you still want it hot, yeah? I still want it I'll hot. hurry up then, love. <laughs> Hello, my favourite chefs. <laughs> Oh, such a close oh, thank plate. You. You, saved, you saved him. I can see him. <laughs> you that. saved him. I can barely touch it, it's so hot. Uh, here we have a uh, homemade, freshly made oh. pasta with oyster, champagne and caviar with a garlic parmesan crisp. Are you trying to show off with the amount of budget you've got here, love? What budget? I heard <laughs> there was no budget. <laughs> Please enjoy. Wow, this is posh. It looks beautiful. Bush. I'd say the plate really highlights the colours mm -hmm. of the dish, of like, uh, it almost contradicts it, whereas it's really, really interesting. Um, you said you wanted technique? There is technique. Yeah, Homemade yeah, pasta. Yeah. I would say I'm a bit nervous about this cooked oyster. I'm a, I'm a raw girl, but... Yeah. Oh, is that bad? No, no, it's not. It's, you can yeah, be as raw as you mind. want, darling. That's not a problem. <laughs> I just like a raw oyster. <laughs> okay, lovely. I'm going for it. I think, yeah, the plate's beautiful as well. Presentation is nice, it's lovely. It's color, color goes well together. It's uh, it's nice. Hmm. This looks worse than what I'm. This is very mm. nice. There's something about oysters that. I love and also hate at the same time. Mm. And I've got it in my head now that I'm eating oyster, it's put me off for some reason. But pasta is really nice. It's cooked well. It's got a nice bit of el elasticity to it. The caviar goes beautifully with it and the sauce is, is a lovely texture and consistency. I'm unsure about this. No, I'm not sure either about this, to be honest. Um, I think the oysters are a bit on the cook. I think that's where your problem come from, um, or your, your concerns come from. It's a bit too soft in my liking. Uh, it's quite creamy, very creamy, very rich, but the seasoning is nice, the plate is nice, the, the parmesan's lovely, the plate's lovely uh, all together. Uh, they add a bit more salt as well, you know, the, the addition of salt with the caviar, natural salt, get to be just borderline. I think it's almost like a, a fishy pasta sort of situation where you've got loads of umami from the parmesan, the caviar, the oysters, it's smacking you around the face, but there's something a little bit confusing for me when I'm actually like tasting it. Um, I think the pasta's really, really well made. I don't know, maybe it's just something that I've never had before and uh, it's something new for me. But very well, challenging dish to make. Yeah, very elegant. Mm -hmm. It's very, uh, very elegant. Chefs, here we have lamb two ways with a parsnip puree. Thank Welcome. you, very good, thank you. It looks delicious. It almost looks like a plate that I'd have in a little wine bar. The sauce looks like so unctuous and the colours are great too. It's a very nice colour, very nice portion as well. Lovely, lovely plates. And see, see what, uh, what it is made of. I'll just eat it like Yeah, this. <laughs> Sorry guys, but you know, that's the only way you can uh, really... Mm. Mm -hmm. This is delicious actually. The parsnip and parmesan puree is beautifully smooth and well made for me. Mm. I think it's delicious. This like lamb shoulder sauce situation, I could just have that on. It's like that as its own yeah. dish actually. Um, it's beautiful. My, uh, for me, personally, the lamb's a little bit under. Almost perfect for me. I just found it a little bit too soft. And I don't know if that's me just being a bit extra. Um, I would have liked a little bit more of searing on it for the fat melted, uh, rendered out a little bit more. Yeah. But I really enjoyed the pickle coming through as well. That was really good to offset how rich everything else is. And the sage leaves complemented it. And then that a bit of texture from the walnut. Personally, I prefer lamb not to be sous vide. It's added this like weird sort of gelatinous texture to it. I'd rather just like cook it in a pan, put it in the oven and cook it perfectly pink. Um, because you haven't got that crispy, delicious fat that's gonna melt in your mouth. The sauce, as you said, is so rich and almost unctuous where it just pairs perfectly with this parsnip cream 
um, the sage leaves, the pickles, the walnuts, it all comes together beautifully and it's really well thought about mm -hmm. and it looked beautiful on the plate as well. Yeah. I agree with you both about the about the meat. I think the the fat is not actually quite uh, cooked cooked at all. To be honest, I just um, you need to do some some searing. That's a shame. I didn't mind, you know, the pink part. I didn't mind at all. I think you, you're right. You know, it's not for everybody. I agree. But it's a bit soft. But it's okay. But the fat is actually very hard to heat when it's so uh, so soft like this. Mm -hmm. It's almost translucent. Uh, the only thing I would have done just to finish it up because you've got some uh, everything is a bit cooked. It's it's, it's cooked and it's nice. But I would actually try to fry up the little uh, the sage. I can see the dry, but I would fry them up a bit more. I would actually try to um, fry my shallots as well, because I find them quite uh, quite um, uh, pickled, quite acidic. I would have liked to, to have a bit more crispiness on it, just for the texture yeah. to blend the things all together. If the fat was crispy, you'd... Correct. Yeah. 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 yeah, correct. Just minor points, it's really beautiful. Yeah. No, well done. This is getting harder and harder. Yeah. Yep. Chefs. This is fried chicken with a kaffir lime and lemongrass honey glaze Ooh. on bok choy with a red curry sauce. Can I ask you just a question? Your kaffir lime leaves, did you use fresh kaffir lime leaves? Fresh kaffir lime. Wonderful. Lovely Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Be nice. We will be nice. We're always nice. You know <laughs> that. <laughs> well, this looks fab. I'm so excited by this. It looks very appealing, very appetizing. Yes. Got quite a thick batter. Mm. Spicy, baby. Do you like it spicy? I like it spicy, yes. I think the cooking of the chicken is really well done. It's still very moist. It's fully cooked through, which is really hard to do with deep frying chicken in a sort of kitchen environment and still get it crunchy on the outside, crispy on the inside without burning it. And the flavour of the sauce is great. Um, I love it. It's like thick and again, very warming. So it's almost like a, a hearty dish again, yeah. even though you've got these lovely fresh flavors coming through. It's really good. I, I don't know if I just like with the bok choy, just something more, because uh, at the minute for me, it's a bit more like fried chicken and a sauce. Yeah, there's no freshness. There's no lightness. There's no acidity. The cooking is to perfection. And uh, it's, it's very nice to see. It's very pleasing. The sauce is a bit thick to me. I like it. I find it very, very, very interesting. Uh, a bit spicy, but it's only for me because I'm not a kind of guy and it's super spicy. But I would actually tolerate this dish very, very well. It would go, I would actually really, really like it. Mm. Uh, I agree with you with bok choy as well. We would have to, to, see, to, to see it in terms of uh, maybe green, you know, maybe maybe poached or maybe blanched. A bit of crock, a bit, a bit of texture, you know, when you go through, it, it actually maybe al dente. Uh, that type of uh, type of cooking for pork choy. It would add some some color to the dish as well on the side, you know, because it's quite brown. It's nice, mm -hmm. but it's quite brown. Okay. But it's a beautiful dish. All, all in all, it's a beautiful dish. It's uh, I like the technique definitely. I'm, I'm I'm impressed. I'm very impressed. You've heard what our judges think, but over to you guys. Comment down below which dish stood out to you. Also, check out our guest chefs in the links down below and be sure to try out your own challenges on our Psychic app, which now has 50% off for the entire year. Next time, we have the final. It's desserts. <laughs>